Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. Tonight on my show, I have the incredible Miss Paula Sinclair. Now, the reason I asked Paula to be on the show tonight um, is because I thought she is an old school girl and she has a lot of knowledge about the business of drag. So I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in to Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. And tonight we're going to get some straight answers from somebody who has worked very hard in the business, understands the business, and the future of the drag business. And the mere fact of living their lives in a term, um, terminal time of this pandemic. So we want to take, get her take on all of this, the drag business, where we go from here, and just overall what it has, what it takes to be a great performer and to survive in this business. So I just want to say welcome to the show, Miss Paula Sinclair. And thank you for having me. I think it's such a privilege for you to ask me to be on such a show as this and to uh, present myself to you and your viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, the reason I wanted you on the show tonight is because I really wanted to talk candid about a lot of things that, like my agent says, I've been pussyfooting around. So I'm just going to start asking direct questions and hopefully we can get some straight answers about dress, about a lot of the issues that are going on in the LGBT two-spirit pronoun community. I, we just want some straight answers. And I think of you can help us out with that. Now, I know you are a 60s baby. Yes, I was born in November 13th, 1960. I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Now, you don't mind me asking, you don't have to say exactly what your last name as a male is, but what was your male name? My name was, oh, I don't mind at all. I am who I am. My name is Paul Eugene Jenkins. Okay. Now, you're from Detroit, Michigan. Yes, I was born in Detroit and I left. I came from a, a broken family. My mother was Caucasian and my father was black and her parents didn't want her to be with my father. So she ended up leaving them. So I really never knew my mother or any of my relations on my mother's side. My uh, father's people always raised me. And his sister, my Aunt Nana, had came to raise me and my sister. And she stayed with us till she got married. At, to when I was like eight years old. And we had relatives because my father is from the South. He moved up in the big, big migration, you know, mm -hmm. when the Southerners to the North. And so we would always go down in the summertime to visit my aunts in uh, Macon, Georgia. And mm -hmm. so when my aunt decided to get married, me, they, my aunts down there took me and my sister in. And plus all the race riots were going on in Detroit then, you know, during the uh, 68 when Martin Luther King got killed. So it was a very tragic time, you know, throughout the country anyway. So me and my sister moved down to Macon, Georgia, and that's where I grew up at. Okay, now how old were you when you left Detroit? I was eight years old. Okay, now I know a, a lot of girls in Detroit, I mean, I know Miss April Summers and a lot of the yeah. girls and a lot of the clubs there and stuff yeah. like that. <clears throat> now, I, when did you decide that, well, let me just ask this question first. What was it like growing up with interracial parents? Well, I never realized I had interracial parents because like I said, I never knew my mother. So my mother wasn't there. And my aunt was like my mother, but I knew she was my aunt Nina. So that's who I thought of. I've always wanted to be with her. I didn't never want to go do anything with my father. He would always take me to, you know, the uh, baseball games and stuff. But he would bribe me, you know, to buy me little toys and stuff at the game, the little bobbleheads and all of that. And all I would do would go to sleep because I was very, a, I guess, auntie's boy, mama's boy. And so, but I was always very, very, very feminine. At a young age, I had a tragic accident. I had went to the circus and saw the people riding stuff around on the wires. And I tried to, we stayed in a two-story apartment building and on our balcony, we had a railing and I tried to put my tricycle up on the railing and fell to concrete. And I was in coma like a week and stuff and all of this. But the story is my sister would always tell everybody I was a sissy cause I fell off uh, the thing to the concrete and stuff and all of that. So 
Yeah. You know, you know, it's it's it, it's funny how you know I hate asking this one particular question because with well, the agent she just pushes because so many of the trans meetings that I have went to to observe. Uh -huh. And just sort of get some knowledge about what I'm supposed to be asking yeah, uh -huh. and, and doing. Now, how do you identify? Identify as gay, identify as a trans person. Really, I identify as I'm just me. And I'm not trying to be crude or anything because I've been in the business and I know I've emceed a lot. I just say I'm a chick with a dick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, just be honest, but. Honestly, I just you just have to become and comfortable with yourself and realize what your life is and the path that your life is going and what you want to be and stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, can 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 I just ask you something? Is is there uh -huh. a door is there a door open where you are? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Guess what job? They can do Okay, I'm so sorry, madame. It's all good, girl. Yeah. So today yeah. I have on my show Miss Paula Sinclair. She's giving Thank us. Thank you all. Hello. Now, now you know, like I said, is now how long have how long have you been transitioning? Oh, I started. Well, but like I said, I was always very, very, very ultra feminine, and everything. And I had such an accepting family. And where I grew up in the South, in Macon, Georgia, even in school and everywhere, I really never had any problems. You know what I'm saying? So I always felt very girly. But when I went off, I started with doing, really started doing uh, drag my senior year in high school. Me and my girlfriend, Tangerine Summers, I met her and we had met earlier because I was a year ahead of her but we were in junior high together. And for some reason, we didn't get along and stuff and everything. But after we got to senior high school, we became the best of friends. And she's really the first one to ever start putting me in the drag and taking me at 16 or 17, going out to the gay clubs and making and stuff called the week three. And then when I got to college, I saw all the, we went out to the beautiful clubs and saw the beautiful shows, even though we had seen some of them because some of the girls from Atlanta were booked down to Macon and I was so mesmerized by them. And so when I got into college, I um, ended up meeting someone and first started taking hormones at 17. Okay, so your drag mother's name is who? She's not my drag mother, she's <laughs> my best sister. I really don't have a drag mother. As I got to Atlanta and met someone by the name of Lisa Alexander, that should have been my drag mother, but we all ended up being just like, they were my older sisters and stuff. Oh, okay. Now, do you, do, do you work? Do you work? Yes, 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 yes. I have, I well before, excuse me, before the COVID, I had been, I had been working for the Denny's Corporation for three years. I was one of the head waitresses there. I worked the graveyard shift from 11 to 7, and I loved every bit of it. Wonderful. Now, what do you think about the election? I think it is about time. I, like I said, my girlfriend's Naisha and Siobhan had been going to Rio for the, like the last 15 years, and they always wanted me to go. So they bought me a ticket this year for my 60th birthday to go to Rio with them on vacation. And we were there in Rio and we were steady watching the elections and the stuff on CNN there. And I am so glad that, especially my state of Georgia, went blue, got it right. And the rest of the country has gotten it right. Now, Donald Trump, he's making an ass out of himself to me. He's done his four years and he needs to just concede because he's making mm -hmm. it worse for him. It is time for a change. We need, and I know it's going to take time to change because no one can go in there and automatically in a year or even maybe three years change some of the stuff, the projects, the things that someone else has done. But we've got hope now. You know, we can get this. The fact that they, you, you have to try, that is yeah. the key. You have to try. And mainly the issues that are facing the LGBT two-spirit pronoun community, such things as health care, education, housing, job so opportunity. These things we have been saying over and over and over and over for way too long. 
way too long. And us as older transsexuals or pre-ops or whatever you want to call yourself, you have to look out. And back in the day, we live our lives so fast, and especially the ones of us that are involved in female impersonation and the pageants and stuff. Sometimes you can get caught up in the fantasy of being a star or a showgirl, and you don't think about real life, but real life is right out there around the corner. And you have to have, you have to be able to separate the drag fantasy and the shows from, you gotta have social security, you have to have housing, you have to have uh, your death insurance policies, your medical insurance. So those things, have to be taken care of for you and stuff. And you have to take care of those things and be able to separate the big, oh, I'm a drag star, I'm a this, I'm a that, from your rich, from real life. You've got to take care of your real life. And with the way the government is going, we have to have our business together. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny when you said that you have to have the business together. It's a shame because most um, drag performers who um, receive some sort of success in our business, right? there's very few that receives the ultimate success in our business. Yes. But now RuPaul has given, or just the VH1 has given drag queens a real voice in a sense, but by them not understanding that fame, yeah. that fortune, the opportunity, yeah. you see so much of the repetitiveness. It goes to show you that I watch the show, I watch what they do, and it seems that they haven't learned anything. Because they are so young, most of the ones that are on there, they are very talented. This new generation, like the like the Bible says, they will be more wicked or they might be a little wiser. But when it comes to stuff, they are so talented, but they're so, like they know everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's all of the new generation because there are some out there that are so grateful and so humble. To me, the best thing or the best advice I could give to any new entertainer or new person coming out Yes, you have talent. Yes, you might have a good look, but you have to realize that there are people that pave the way, that do know a little bit more more than you. Even me at 60, I'm not too old to learn from nobody. See, tonight I had to learn how to get on this Zoom. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So <laughs> you should be open to listen to people, even if you take the advice or not, but do not feel, humility takes you some of everywhere. Humility will take you a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Paula, I've been thinking about this a lot. And I thought to myself, the pandemic is good and bad at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of the pandemic, it's now given us an opportunity to talk to directors producers, singers, right. be in people's homes we would normally never be able to talk to right. or get their attention. And for the drag community, that has such a powerful voice now, even though we say with RuPaul, but they had a powerful voice back in the days, they just yeah. didn't know how to use that avenue. And for some reason, RuPaul figured it all out. Yeah, yeah. or was just but very lucky. Can I tell you one, say one thing though, even before RuPaul, there were so many transsexual girls passing in the business mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. And I think that even film has given the, uh, uh, the TS transsexual girls a lot of outlet to, you know, like, um, um, through like Alexandra Billingsley and them and uh, Laverne mm -hmm. Cox through film and, uh, and um, Candace Kane has been on mm -hmm. film and stuff. And I think so now is the film market has gotten very relaxed with, cause usually they will put someone when they had a person portraying a female impersonator, it would always have to be somebody you can say, oh, this is just like a dude dressed up or 
even though, you know, back in the day with Flip Wilson and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Who was very mm-hmm. good at Jared Dean, not putting down Flip Wilson now <laughs> or nothing. But nowadays it's done got, it's beginning to get a little bit more mainstream. Mm-hmm. And I might have to give RuPaul a checkpoint for at least putting it out there for the people. Even though I don't personally agree, and I've known RuPaul for years from in Atlanta. I know him personally. I knew when he first started as a punk rocker, when she used to tape up her high heels because her feet was too big to wrap around, when she was in the van with her, with the wee-wee pole and everything. We all worked <laughs> at a bar called Weekends in Atlanta. So, and I, yeah. I admire her. I commend her for, for her success and what she has done for the female impersonation community. We must give her her grace on that. The only mm-hmm. thing I don't agree is, you know, they get to the point where they don't want none of the um, the girls that live as women that have breasts on it, that have this. And I understand that's her pr- platform. That's her show. And she can present stuff how, how she wants to. But I think when we present stuff, sometimes if we're going to present that category or that out there, we should present it all, you know. Well, you know, you're right. I think <clears throat> you hit it on the head. It needs to be real. It needs to be addressed realistically. We understand breastplates and we understand that. But 90%, we know 90% of the girls in the U.S. have some sort of augmentation, whether it's their lips, their cheeks, their hips, their breasts, or whatever. And this needs needs to be... Excuse me. Go ahead. If you're going to do something, it should be one for all, all for one, because it's a whole realm of different areas of female impersonation. And like I said, that's your show. You can present the, the side that you would feel most comfortable with, but at least have one um, transsexual or TS girl or pre-op girl that's in the business on the show to present that side that you feel that would fit into the show. You know, I think that um, the reason, I mean, I'm I'm not trying to think for RuPaul, but I'm just thinking that she's afraid of the transsexuals because the transsexuals in return, if she put them on her show, the show will become about that. Because people will yeah, be more interested yeah. in seeing that because yeah. it's more like Holly, the girls who have the breast augmentations and the, um, all of the surgeries are more like celebrities and they look yeah. more realistic. So yeah. in, in, in all fairness, more people would view a show like that if it was yeah. for the transsexuals. Yeah. And I think that there's a real opportunity here for the old school girls to have a show like RuPaul. And right it, it's, it's, it's shocking to see. It, it, I hope the girls don't miss this opportunity. I, me either, I do too. And because with longevity comes intelligence, comes wisdom and come experience and knowledge. and That's what all makes up for a well-rounded seasoned individual because we all been young and dumb. I was young and dumb and fast. We all are, that comes with youth. That comes with youth, don't get me wrong. But in longevity and time, wisdom comes and with wisdom and experience comes. So, you know, with that, and you need your older seasoned entertainers and um, female impersonators to be around also to guide and to still hold the, you know, hold the torch for mm-hmm. everything. And we still sweeping regardless mm-hmm. at 60, look at us and what we, we're still out here sweeping. I hear some of the youngest, oh, what is grandmama doing? What, what is this? You better be glad grandmama was him. That's right. <laughs> grandmama now- made it possible. Your grandmama made it possible for you to be right to run around here and twist and put on some makeup. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a there's a few. I mean, I, I I'm trying not to be focused so negative about the certain yeah. things, but but we need to address the issues because we understand how could you have a show this popular and doing this well and not have included the girls who paved the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's important for us <clears throat> as a community is to understand that now we're in this pandemic, 
This yes. is giving us a real opportunity. So for I watch all the girls doing their talk shows, their cooking right. shows, or whatever. But you yeah. know what I find is 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 happening. Now, uh -huh. this, this is this is how smart RuPaul is, and mm -hmm. is how he is looking at the old school girls. The old right. school girls now have started to rely on old school and not keeping up the real fight. Right. You know, before, when they, when they kept saying Cash App this, Vimo this, the girls were hustling. But then when Facebook was talking about the music rights and this and that, Mm -hmm. It put a block on everybody. But we yeah. all found a way around that with all yeah. of the tutorials. And for a while, you saw that most of the performers that were on the show, it was at a low. Yeah. Now, if you did, what I noticed is that the old school girls aren't keeping up the fight because yeah. I noticed with RuPaul, that rhythm is started again where you see he must have sent out a message to all of them saying do makeup tutorials be live do this do that because now you're seeing that rhythm again good and I, and I think that's a good thing to keep it going like i said i think rupaul started a very 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 good franchise and his his show has helped and opened doors for many a person and has opened the eyes of a lot of people that wouldn't normally be able to see female impersonation and to understand it. And I do, do give, give much grace for that because mm -hmm. when it, any doors are open in that area, it opens for all of us, you know? Okay, so what do you think the old school girls should do now? What do you think they should be doing now? I think the old school girls should be mentoring the younger generation, but also keeping themselves out there being relevant. And like I said, I don't do a lot of shows. I do a bunch of shows because, you know, I was working before the pandemic and stuff. And mm -hmm. basically I was just, you know, working on my job. And then every maybe once or twice a month, I would go out and do bookings and stuff and everything. Because, you know, earlier in my life, I'd always worked at show bars, you know, the longest mm -hmm. I worked at the Armory for 14 years, I've worked at Backstreet, I did the Chaparral, I did, you know, all the time I always had a show job. You know, I did Levitas, Illusions, mm -hmm. way back in the day and all of that. So I've always basically had a show job and stuff, even though I've always sometimes had, you know, a regular nine to five or 11 to seven, whatever the hours were and stuff. But I think you know, as you get older, you've done it so much and you'd be like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. But still, you have to get out there, support the community, do the walk, stay relevant, keep your name out there. Now is a new era. Social media is here. Keep yourself relevant on social media and let the people know that you are still around, you're still doing good, and you still trying to uplift the community. Mm -hmm. Now, you know who I, I, I noticed one particular entertainer, not that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that she's my favorite entertainer of old school girls, but she keeps, she keeps up the fight and she's doing really well. I love watching her. Um, Miss Tasha Long, I have yeah. been watching uh -oh. her shows. Tasha is a wonderful sister. She has, I've known her for over, I know, 30 years and stuff. We've been very close friends. I've been to her house, stayed with her many, many times, traveled with her. She's a superb entertainer and an excellent human being. I think we got stuck. Did we get stuck, baby? Oh, man. I think we got stuck. It's their recording. Did we get stuck, baby? No, not leave. Don't leave. What is he saying? Then we got stuck, baby. Hello. Oh, I got stuck. What that happened? I think we got stuck, child. It just went off. 
Recording. <clears throat> My Lord, it just went off. I don't know what it did. What did it do? Okay. Oh, there you go. Yes. Okay. I th hold on. Hold on. Let me go back. Let me see. What did I do? Oh my God. It's, it's I, good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I just, yeah. I just can't see you. I okay. Let me see what it go back on. Launch meeting. I had to go back. On. Okay. It's look like it's recording back because it just all of a sudden stopped. Okay. okay. Now it's up to you. It's at your picture, like the beginning part. Okay. Can you see me? No, I can't see you. I just see your picture, like at the beginning. Okay. Now do you and see me? There we are again. Okay. So um, Zoom, will, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, will, Zoom will fix that. So it's all good. Oh, really? You won't even notice. You won't even notice that we stopped talking. Oh well, good then. Good then, sweetheart. Now, like I said, is um, I wanted to talk about the. Tasha Long, I see that she is keeping up the good fight. Yeah. She's really trying to just sort of, like you say, stay relevant, teach a little bit. And I admire that because yeah. I saw that she understands this business. Oh, yes. Yes, she and, does. She, mm -hmm. And, 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 and I'm, I was very surprised that a lot of the old school girls like I see what's your name as well, Antoinette Roberts. She's mm -hmm. trying to keep the shows going and keep the girls employed. Yeah, and, she's and, uh, over the shows yeah. at Hamburger Mary's down there. Uh huh. And most of the most of the older girls, uh, she's trying to help keep them working and stuff like that. And like you said, it's yes. good that the fact that the girls need to stay relevant and just keep themselves out there. Now, yes, yes I, you have to. Now you know. Uh, just a few more questions now. And what what do you think is the future of drag? What do you think the future of drag? Because I don't think it's going to be the RuPaul's Drag Race is going to be the future of drag. And that will be a part of it because it's became mm -hmm. very relevant. And you know, everything has its era, and it says things were one way in our era, and everything is totally changing. And I had to realize change is good. Mm -hmm. You know, some change is good, and, and of course it's good. But the thing is, everyone needs to learn that we just, you just have to keep up and keep relevant. Music is, is going to change, style is going to change, hairstyles is going to change, and sometimes it leads back into the old because everything old is new. You know, with just a twist sometimes. But mm -hmm. I think it's just going to, everything is going to evolve as the years go by. The music is going to be evolved, the makeup, the clothing, and you just have to keep up with it. If mm -hmm. you're going to stay in the business and stay relevant, you have to figure out your lane and what can fit you and get into it and just be there because you still old school stuff is going to be, I do all types of old school stuff, but if you're an entertainer, you're going to have to intertwine the old school with the new school also and everything because you want to stay relevant and some of it you just have to find your fit within it and stuff. Okay. Now I uh, just a couple of more questions. You're doing you're doing okay. you're doing amazing. You're explaining it very well to our audience and I'm I'm really appreciative. I take my wig off oh. to you. So because you're doing an amazing interview for us and helping us educate the audience out there. Now I know you've been in the pageant system for a long time. Yes, 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 and, very long. <laughs> and for one of my favorite ones is Miss Continental. Of now, course. Miss Continental has been a base for a lot of good things and some controversy as well. Yeah, of course, of you course, know. yes. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, because you can't have the good without the bad. Of course yeah. not. Of course not, baby. You know, with 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 all of the one of my one of the people that came here to Toronto to for me many years ago, Erica Andrews came a lot for me to help me get things going here, and Tanisha Cassadine, somebody I brought here first. The Divine Cassadine. Mm -hmm, Divine Cassadine. Divine, baby. Yes. 
Now, we used to talk about the silicone. Uh-huh. And I, she would be here in Toronto entertaining and everything. She would stay at my place. And mm-hmm. I would we'd be in the living room talking. And I would talk to her about the silicone, about me doing the silicone. And now, you know, over the last few years, lots of the girls have died or there was yeah. a lot of controversy here and there. And then there's been a lot of secrecy for many, many, many years. Right. And lots of girls that have died without their story being told why right. they died. Yeah, what do you think about the silicone? Well, you know, as you know, I have silicone and stuff. And back in the day, this was in the early 80s when Joanne and Mark and all them were pumping. Joanne was the real nurse lady who was an anesthesiologist from New York. And mm-hmm. they're very clean, very safe, and all of that. You were getting very, very good products. And Michelle also in Atlanta that also died, but she died at an older age. And you're back in then, you were getting very good work. You were in a safe environment. It was hygienic and stuff and everything like that. And they would just pump you to be pumping you for the money. Mm-hmm. Then it switched over, I think, like in the late, because um, Joanne stopped pumping. More, all of the older people start, p- stopped pumping. And the new group of people came out. And they were give, giving out all kind of different stuff. And, you know, one is hygienic and then really didn't know the muscles and the veins of the bodies and would just pump you. You could already be, you could be sexy. And with silicone, it's a foreign subject, foreign matter going into your body. So you mm-hmm. really need to be in good health and everything. And a lot of the girls, when you know the AIDS epidemic came, a lot of girls caught AIDS. A lot of girls mm-hmm. wanted to die beautiful and stuff. And they mm-hmm. would be sick and go get pumped. And then they'll have some kind of reaction from, you know, whatever's going on in their body and the silicone and stuff. So then some mm-hmm. of them might end up from dying from that and stuff. So it was so much extra going on. Like I said, I got pumped over 30 years ago. It was not mm-hmm. one of my wisest decisions. I must admit to that. Mm-hmm. But thank God I did get very good grade silicone. And mm-hmm. it felt up very, very, very well for me. Now, I would tell the newer girls, and I'm glad I don't even know anyone that's pumping now. And I used to know some of everybody. Like, I tell mm-hmm. all my newer nieces and everything, I'm not going to lead you to no silicone. Mm-hmm. It was wrong choice for me. Like I said, I went to Mexico and had my breast scraped and everything and got implants. But back in my era, it was the thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, but now when you know better, you do better and you teach better. You see what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. like I told all my nieces, take you some hormones and get some implants. And mm-hmm. if you want body reconstruction or facial reconstruction, go to a plastic surgeon yeah. and get it done. Because this is a whole new era and a whole new day. And then a lot of girls got hooked on silicones. You know, like people can get hooked on plastic surgery. The same mm-hmm. way back in the day. The girls, mm-hmm. oh, my body needs to be bigger, especially if they gained a little weight in their waist and whatever. And thank God I've always been naturally thin. They would say, oh, mm-hmm. I get a little more silicone, make my hips wider and my waist will look smaller. You know what I'm saying? Or I get my breasts mm-hmm. bigger and stuff. And so, mm-hmm. then, you know, some people get got over addicted to it. Then, like I said, it wasn't putting out the best of product and stuff. And, you know, so... The worst stuff start happening, which I hate. But like I said, I'm glad in the last, maybe the last 10, 12 to 15 years, you really hadn't heard of anybody pumping no more, like back in the way back in the day, you know, and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I think it is a good thing that that stopped. And, you know, it happened through, I guess, all the media from the deaths and what silicone could do to your body. And then from the bad silicone that people were getting and stuff. So nowadays, and everybody's tending more to going to the legal way and going to the plastic surgeons. And I think that is the best way. I tell you, I tell all of my younger sisters, my nieces or whatever, I don't know no silicone doctors. Don't want to know none. I ain't Mm -hmm. no Give me a pair of pantyhose to put on this old broom body and I still keep going. Because, <laughs> because if I had a new and had the outlet to get to the things they have now, you know, now it's so much more out there that 
that the transsexuals and queens we have to get to now, and it's more open, that you have a more of an outlet now. Go mm-hmm. to your doctor, get on you some hormones and have your body regulated and all of that, which we could do that. But when it comes to the plastic surgery, go to your good plastic surgeon, go have your work done correct. And if it's mm-hmm. not done correct, then you can go to somebody and sue them and have it redone and redone right and stuff. Mm-hmm. The only thing I tell the girls, just please don't get addicted to it because girl, you don't want this done. You're going to be looked up, you have five no jobs, six breasts, uh, implants and all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's very addictive to some people because we are, some people have addictive personalities. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, the good thing about all this is that you're educating us on the fact that the girls need to see a doctor. And number yes. two, Yes. And it's a good thing that we're hearing less and less about silicone, but we it still really need to keep, so we still need to keep it in the spotlight a little bit. So just in case the grassroots girls haven't just got, or you know, it hasn't yeah. really sunk in. Yeah, now, yeah. The thing for me is this: is you know, sometimes when you think about the pageants, or you think about the contestants, or you think about the, your girlfriends, like you said, your daughters and your nieces, they see you. They see a positive role model. They see somebody trying to work and function in society, understanding that at the end of the day, it's about real life. At night, it's pageantry and all of that. And I need to be glamorous and I'm fabulous and this. But then the day, you got to pay your bills and live real life. Yeah. Now, the good thing about all of this is, is that you have been very clear to them. I don't know no silicone doctors because, you know, of course, the young ones, they see women like yourself and yeah. other women like Miss Continentals or Miss yeah. Duval or whatever, you know, the ones that look realistic and, and glamorous and, yeah. and people, are, people are drawn to those kind of things. But of course, yeah. It, 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 it's, the sad thing about it is that sometimes the systems seem to not promote the boys, mm-hmm. which makes them desperate to look like the ones that look more glamorous and look like women. So they choose. Well, well now I'm gonna say this about some systems. With Continental, Jim started Continental from back in the day when Miss America, because he's always had a thing for very uh, beautiful girls in his show and everything. And anyway, Jim used to do, do um, you know, female impersonation and everything, Mr. Flynn. Mm-hmm. And so it got to a point where, you know, um, back in the day, Miss America didn't want, you know, after um, um, uh, the Hawaiian lady won back in like the selects, the 70s and stuff, she went and had a sex change and all of that and stuff. And so they put a rule up, whereas you had to be a straight up boy to be in Miss, you know, in Miss Gay America and all of this mm-hmm. and all of this. So it kind of caused a division, whereas the uh, hormone queens or girls that wanted to live as women, you know, couldn't, couldn't be in Miss America. We were all female impersonators and stuff. So he started Continental really for an outlet for the uh, hormone queens or the girls that was transitioning and everything and stuff. But it wasn't a thing Whereas if you was a boy queen, you wouldn't win or you wouldn't have a, as good a, of a chance to win because you were competing with... Uh, transitioning girls or anything like that. But I think now it's like there are amazing boy queens, amazing Mm -hmm. boy queens that you would think were actually hormone queens or transsexuals or whatever or lived as ladies now. So the division is not so wide at all. And I think everybody is on a level playing field. And so I really, really, you just have to be at the A top one of your game, whatever, cause you're on stage asking to be judged. You are in a competition. Mm-hmm. So it, it mm-hmm. takes stuff, it takes tough skin. I had to learn that. You know, any type of show business, modeling, acting, any kind of thing where you're putting yourself out there. You gotta be able to stand up for criticism. You gotta be ready for criticism. You gotta be ready to be told no how many times, but you keep pushing on. And if you are in a beauty type situation or beauty pageant type thing, you got to be able to withstand saying, here I am, I'm standing before you judge me. So mm-hmm. you can't be mad, you can't be whatever, because you are asking these people to judge you. You're asking them for their input. So just 
just be able to take it. And I think on a level playing field, put your A game forward, your best foot forward and go on forward. And if you feel it's not for you, then come out of the fire and do something else and watch the pageant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, you have... Think we know got stuck again. <laughs> Zoom. Then we got stuck again. Come on now, I'm ready to ready to do the one that's in there. We done got stuck again. What time is it? God damn it, stuff to nine now. Oh, Lordy. Oh, shit. Let me see. I'm so big now. Come on. Come on. Come on, Zoom. Oh, shit. I got thrown off again. Okay, let me go back on. So we got thrown off, girl. Yeah. Okay. She's going to have to come back on. Um, you okay, here it goes, starting again. Yeah. It's you okay. back on, cat. Yeah. They keep yeah. knocking us off. <laughs> yeah. It keeps recording, so it, you won't you won't notice this. When oh, I know. Coming. I'm sure, yeah. Uh -huh. um, but anyway, I'm going to wrap it up with you. And um, I just want to say that um, I am so glad that, you know, I got to meet you and talk to you about a lot of the issues affecting our community. Sometimes... Yeah. We don't want to talk about these things. And it's great now. I was going to just, I just want to just take one more little take, on your take on just one more thing. As you of know, um, a lot of the, 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 the trans women have been murdered by yes. their lovers or yeah. their husbands yeah. or whoever yeah. just running around with at the time. What do you think on that? What, what do you think the girls should be doing to protect themselves? Well, I'm going to say this. It is very heartbreaking for me this weekend because Yuni is my niece through Shay Shay, who is my dear, 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 dear sister. And Yuni is, was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful lady. Beautiful, gorgeous, vibrant, bubbly. And it is a shame. I don't care whatever it is. She is dead. Mm -hmm. And I just think it is just heartbreaking that... Um, it had to happen, and in the way that it happened, it's just that we have to be transparent as um, pre-op TS girls or living as TS girls. You have to be transparent with whoever you're with or whoever you're trying to date. Be honest. Be straightforward with these gentlemen. And so mm -hmm. it's none of this playing this game stuff because people are crazy out here. Men are crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a sex worker, I've been there, done that. If you're working off the line or if you're just trying to have a boyfriend or anything. And if you're in a relationship with someone that knows everything about you, just keep it good and comfortable and smooth and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you're not, if you're just having, going out to a bar or you're living that totally straight life, whatever that's making your life happy, and you should be able to be happy. But mm -hmm. first of all, you should be honest. In order to be happy, you have to be honest with yourself and with other people. And that's my take and that's my advice to any of my sisters. Be careful and be honest with yourself and with other people. And on that note, Ms. Paula Sinclair, you have cleared it up for us all. Well, and I just want to say thank you very much for doing this for me. We had a few issues, but we're old school girls, like you said, and we're not. Yes, yes. And we're always willing to learn and yes. to share what we have learned. Well, now, thank you so much, Stephanie. 
I'm going to, in closing, I'm just going to say this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today on the show, I had Miss Paula Sinclair. She gave yeah. us a great insight into the world of the pageant business, the world of drag, <clears throat> the world of reality, of just the fact that um, you need to live a normal life and act, you know, do the things that are amazing to make your life amazing and to make your family, your friends, your support system all understand that you are just who you are. And sometimes we get caught up in the celebrity of drag and we get caught up in the celebrity of whatever the moment is. And we forget about that we have to live life as human beings and understand that at the end of the day, you need to pay your rent, you need health care, you need education, and you need to be able to help and teach each other. And you need to live in a world where we all understand that we're human beings and we have feelings and that we all belong and we all have something to offer. So on that note, I just want to take my, like I said, to all the girls, take my wig off to you, Miss Paula Sinclair. You've been in the oh, business 40 years. Too, darling. You've been in the business 40 years and we have learned a lot. And we'll have a lot more to learn from you. And thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you for sharing insight into what the young children need to understand today, what maybe some of the producers, some of the show directors, and just some of your fellow entertainers need to understand. Hopefully they will learn something from this great conversation that we had. And I am just blessed that I met you. So well, thank, thank you, Ms. You. Paula Sinclair from Detroit, Michigan, but now she resides in the ATL. In Augusta, Georgia now. Oh, Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, mm, the Georgia. Bi the, the Bible Belt. Augusta, baby, and I love it. And I want to thank all of you. And, Steph and Stephanie, I bow down to you. And thank you for doing this platform for us. And you have a good and wonderful Thanksgiving. And you have a good night tonight. Thank you very much. And on that note, good night, Miss Paula Sinclair. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.